We Beat the Street, Chapter 5. How much do you need? Ramik, age 12. Ramik, a sturdy, tough seventh grader at Hubbard Middle School in Plainfield, New Jersey, headed home from the gifted and talented program that met after school once a week. He rode in his grandmother's red Chevy Caprice Classic, a long and comfortable car that perfectly fit her style. He loved it when she could pick him up. It was only in this car he could talk to Ma and work out some of the frustrations and confusion he felt. You like being in this program, Ramik? His grandmother asked. Yeah, Mrs. Hat looks me right in my face and tells me I'm intelligent. Not just smart, intelligent. I like that word, he said proudly. She makes me feel like I can maybe be somebody. I tell you that all the time, boy, Ma said. as She smoothly turned the corner. I know, but you're supposed to tell me stuff like that. Mrs. Hat is different. Has she been there the whole time you've been in this program? His grandmother asked. Yeah, except for third and fourth grade when I couldn't go because I was in a ca in Catholic school, and you know how that went. Ma laughed. That was a real disaster. It's a good thing your mama ran out of money about the same time she ran out of patience with those nuns. Imagine putting my grandson in special ed. Hey, Ma, I need some new shoes, Ramik said, changing the subject. Well, what's wrong with the ones you got on? They're old and beat up. The kids at school got these cool new sneakers made by Nike. I want some shoes with a swoosh. He knew it sounded stupid to her. Ma laughed. You must be a fool, boy. You want shoes with a swoosh, whatever that is, and your mama can't pay the rent? How much these shoes cost? They only cost $50. And even as he said it, Ramit could predict how she would respond. She liked to quote well-worn proverbs and wise sayings whenever she had the chance to teach one of her many children or grandchildren. Boy, you don't have a pot to pee in nor a window to throw it out. Don't try to live high off the hog. The shoes you're wearing will do just fine until next school year when you've outgrown them. To close the matter, she changed the subject. Didn't you tell me you were going to try out for another play at school? Ramik sighed and looked out the window. He gave up on the shoes. Talking about being in plays, however, always cheered him up. Yeah, I did. I got the part. What's the name of the play? His grandmother asked. The Wiz. I got a big part. Well, I'm mighty proud of you. Ramit grinned. The teacher, Miss Scott, said I, I had really good acting ability. Maybe I'll move away from here and be a movie star and make a million dollars. Then I can buy you some shoes with a swoosh, too. They both laughed. As much as you sing and dance around here, boy, you're a natural for the movies, his grandmother commented. I really like being in plays, Ramik told her dreamily. Well, how come, she asked. Well, for one thing, there are always lots of girls around and lots of free time backstage. He looked at his grandmother out of the corner of his eye. A ladies' man, just like your daddy, his grandmother teased. But the real reason, Ramik told her honestly, is the applause. I love it when the curtains go up, when I hear the people in the room laugh or react to what I'm doing on stage. But mostly, I love it when the show is over and everybody claps and applauds and cheers. It's like they're all telling me I'm cool, I'm wonderful, I'm the best thing in the world. And I understand, she said softly. Hey, Ma, Ramik began, Miss Scott is starting a drama class and I have a chance to maybe get real acting jobs. He hesitated. I know you said I couldn't get the shoes, but this is different. I need some photographs, uh, a portfolio, so Miss Scott can send them out to producers and stuff. Well, how much do you need? $150, Ramik admitted. He waited while she sucked in her breath and exhaled noisily. Goodness, child, she exclaimed. Well, I figured if you said yes to the shoes, I would say I didn't really want them if you could help me with get the pictures instead. Oh, that's an awful lot of money. You trying to play me, boy? She didn't sound angry. No, ma'am, Ramik replied honestly. The last day to pay the fee for the pictures is tomorrow, he added. Why you wait until the last minute to ask? Ramik lowered his head. I knew it was more money than we got. The Caprice rolled to a stop in front of the apartment where Ramik lived with his mother and new baby sister. I got my house payment here in my purse, Ma said slowly. You know how proud I am to own that house, boy? but I suppose I could borrow from my cousins and stall the mortgage man a couple of days. Ramik looked at her with hope. Would you do that for me, he asked. I might. Oh, I'd do anything you ask me, forever, Ramik said, pleading. Well, you'll do that anyway, Ma replied with a chuckle. You understand what a sacrifice this is? 
Oh, yes, ma'am. I don't know. It sounds to me like it's for some foolishness. Well, if I get these pictures, I can get parts in real movies, in shows in New York. I think I got talent, Ma. So does every other out-of-work actor in the world, she replied, while looking at Rameek with this grim smile. I promise to make you proud of me, Rameek said. Ma sighed again. Well, I know, boy. You come by my house in the morning and I'll give it to you. I believe in you, Rameek. I want you to have the best. Well, can't you give it to me now? I have to be at school real early tomorrow, Rameek asked. I love your mama, but I don't trust her, his grandmother explained. She's got demons that eat at her soul. I promise, Rameek pleaded. She won't even know I have it. His grandmother looked doubtful, but she reached into her large pocketbook and pulled out a wad of money. This is for your future, you hear? She handed it to Rameek, who hugged her tightly. Yes, ma'am, Rameek replied with excitement. I love you, Ma. Thank you so much. I promise to make you proud of me. I'm already proud of you, boy. Your mama is too, whether you know it or not. Don't screw this up. Yes, ma'am, Rameek promised again, and the red Chevy Caprice roared away. When Rameek walked into his house, the first thing he noticed was the silence, the television and the radio, which constantly ran, whether anyone paid any attention to them or not, were quiet, and his baby sister Mecca lay asleep in her crib.